Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. I am Canna Campbell. So today's video is a short but sweet video. I'm gonna share with you the top three things that I am so glad that I did for myself when I was young. And I feel really old saying that. But if I could go back in time and say to my younger self, make sure you do these three things. These are the three things that I'm about to share with you. But please remember, as you're watching this video and any of my other content, please know that this is always general advice only. It's not personal advice, product advice, or strategic advice. It's purely for your financial education, empowerment, and efficiency. Now, also, before we get into today's video, I have some very exciting news to share with you. I have a second podcast. Yes. I have teamed up with the guys behind Fear and Greed, which is one of Australia's top podcasters, and together we have launched a new podcast. It's called How Do They Afford That? It's published every Wednesday morning. They go for about 20, 25 minutes, and we pry, like peeking over your neighbor's fence, into everyday Australia's finances to find out how we are all managing money how we are managing to keep our head above water, what we are doing, what we are thinking, what we are researching in order to manage our financial affairs in a more efficient way and get ahead in, let's be honest, a challenging dynamic world. In fact, a very expensive world, if you don't mind me adding. So this, so this podcast is published every Wednesday morning and I will link in the video description box below all the details. So please make sure you are following and you leave a rating and review. And by the way, this is on top of my normal everyday Monday morning podcast, which is Sugar Mama's Fire Play, which goes into more detail and talks to people about financial setbacks and challenges and how they have not overcome them, but they've thrived through them. So you get double the podcast love. All right, so what are the three things that I'm so glad I did in my youth to set myself up financially? All right, the first thing I wanna share with you is very personal, and if I start to stutter, it's because I'm a little bit shy and nervous about sharing this with you. But in my early 20s, I took out comprehensive personal insurance, not home and contents and car insurance, that's general insurance. I took out personal insurance, which includes trauma cover, income protection, life cover, TPD cover. Now, I took them out in my 20s, and I remember a few people saying to me, why would you bother doing that? You're so young, and you don't really have any money yet, or much money behind you yet. But I'm actually so glad I did, because at the time I sat down and I looked at what I wanted to achieve financially, and what I valued, and what was important to me, and what comfort and peace of mind I really looked for in my life. And I took out all those insurance policies. Now, whilst I have never touched wood, ever claimed on this money, it gives me a really good sleep at night, and really get great peace of mind and comfort knowing that no matter what happens from a medical perspective, whether it be a sickness or an accident, I can still work on my financial goals and make sure that my family remains financially secure. So if I couldn't work due to a medical reason, I can still afford to pay and cover the mortgage and make sure it's paid off. I can still pay for recovery and rehabilitation costs that may not necessarily be covered in Australia. I can afford to take time off. This is incredibly important to me. Now, not only am I so glad I took this out, because it gives me that comfort and peace of mind, I'm actually really glad I took this out because I've gone through some very dark, challenging times around my mental health and I actually would no longer be insurable today. But because I took those policies out when I was fit, when I was healthy, when I was mentally, far more mentally resilient back then, I'm insured for all of those terms and conditions today. So no matter what happens, I have great comfort and I have a really comprehensive security net behind me on top of all the other obvious things like emergency money and redraw facilities and offset accounts and things like that. But I'm so glad I took personal insurance out back in my youth. And if you don't have it, I highly recommend speaking to a financial planner to work out what you really need. The second best thing that I ever did for myself financially was I got myself educated. I learned about various different legal strategies, hacks, habits, insights, loop windows, loopholes, all those various things to help me build wealth efficiently. And I'm so glad I've done all this because today I look back at what I have built and what I've achieved. And I am so glad I learned about all these things back then because I have allowed these strategies to be used with the power of compounding interest over the last you know, 15, 20 years to get, help get me where I am today. So if you wanna follow my advice, get yourself educated and informed and start applying all of those things in your life. And they may seem small, they may seem insignificant, but over a long period of time, 
I sometimes have to pinch myself and I am so glad I, I know what I'm doing with my money. And I also keep my finger on the pulse with what's going on in the world and what rules and regulations may change. And then the third and final thing that I'm so glad that I did for myself financially is I cut the crap. I didn't just talk about investing and saving and paying off debt um, and looking after my super. I actually did all these things for myself financially. I probably did more doing than actually more talking about it. And for example, the $1,000 project, even with the market pullback and volatility that's going on today, that portfolio is worth, when I last checked, $230,000. Now that portfolio is only seven years old. And yes, there is a small margin loan included in that investment portfolio, which is not personal advice or product advice or strategic advice. But it is incredible how I've literally built that portfolio $1,000 at a time, used the power of compounding interest and reinvested all of those dividends and used smart, educated and very conservatively managed, efficient debt in that strategy to help build that portfolio. Now, I have just about to launch a podcast which shares with you the passive income for this portfolio and where it's all up to and what of all the things I've been doing to get myself there. But... Last financial year, when I did my taxes, my $1,000 project investment portfolio paid me a passive income, a gross passive, in passive income of over $16,000. Now, that is my money working for me. And that $16,000 a year, whilst it was a particularly good year because there were some special dividends paid, that is all going to contribute to my financial well being and my family's financial well being, which is incredibly important to me. But I am so glad I didn't just sit around talking about, yes, one day I'm going to invest. Yes, I will do this. Yes, I will do that. I'm so glad that I just got on and did it. And that is exactly the same stance that I take when it comes to saving up for my first property. That is the exact same stance I take when I look at my superannuation. I'm so glad that I got it consolidated early in life. I'm so glad that I managed it correctly, making sure that the correct contributions were going in and at the right time. And I made sure also that it was set up in the right type of superannuation account so I wouldn't be chopping and changing and rolling and moving it over all over the place. And I've made sure that that money is properly invested. So my top three things, just to summarize this video for you very, very quickly, is number one, I took out the right types, levels and amounts of cover when it came to personal insurance. As I said, I'm not insurable today, so I'm so glad that I took those policies out when I was fit healthy and strong. The second thing that I'm so glad I did for myself was I educated myself about money. Everything from how to manage a budget, to stick to a budget, to set up a superannuation account, to understanding tax effective strategies, to understanding different products, tools, and different investment options as well. So that I could apply those and make sure that I'm using and growing my money as efficiently and as in a savvy, sexy way as possible. And then thirdly, I'm so glad I just got on with it. I stopped talking about it and I just simply did it. And I've never, ever looked back. So I really hope that as you watch this video, you think, wow, all right, this is a sign. Listening to Kanna and giving advice to her younger self is a sign that I need to start thinking about these things and start doing these uh, things for myself. Or perhaps you've already started doing all these things, but it's giving you a good trigger or signal or sign or kick up the backside to go and look at these things in more detail to see what you could be doing better. Now, if you have really enjoyed listening to this and you want to know more things that I'm really glad I did for myself, can I highly recommend you go and listen to this podcast on Sugar Mama's Fireplay, which are the top five things that I did for myself back when I was in my early 20s, because I go into more detail into each of these things, but I also share with you two extra things which are equally as important. Now, please make sure you're subscribed to my YouTube channel because next week I'm going to be publishing the three most stupidest things I ever did for myself financially. What are my three biggest regrets? And I really think you're going to enjoy watching this video. All right, everyone, thank you so much for watching. Make sure you are subscribed. As I just said, you're following me on both of my podcasts. And of course, never forget my Instagram account, Sugar Mama TV. All right, everyone, thanks for watching. Ciao for now.